In this demo tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a snowflake using the mirror and circular pattern features in Inventor. I'm going to start off with a sketch on my front plane. And because I'm going to be using the circular pattern feature, my origin point as well as the z-axis in my origin folder are going to be very important. So I have to make sure I line up using that. I'm going to start off with a rectangle. Uh, and I'm going to make it a construction rectangle by clicking on the construction line. And you'll notice it's dotted. This is going to be a bounding box that's going to keep me within my uh, desired size of three inches or so. I'm going to make the two sides equal so I have a square. And then I'm going to dimension one of those to one and a half because when I pattern it and mirror it, it'll be about three by three. Turn my construction line off by clicking on the button again. And then I'm going to start to draw my shape. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just draw a rectangle to start off with. And then I'm going to just draw a series of lines that are uh, parallel and perpendicular to each other. Just keeping an eye on my constraints here. Okay, And then I'm going to make each of these equal to each other by clicking on the equal constraint and then clicking on each of those. And... I could trim up my shape, but when I do that, these lines don't want to line up anymore. If I move one of them, the rest of them don't move. So I can either not worry about trimming it, or I can add a collinear constraint, which keeps two lines kind of on the same, um, two line segments on the same line. So if I click collinear and make these collinear to each other, now, when I move these, they move together. Okay, I'm going to make these uh, a little bit smaller. I'm going to add a dimension to one. And because I made them all equal to each other, they're all going to change their size accordingly. And then I'm going to use that dimension to make my middle dimension half of that. Because when I mirror it, I want it to be an eighth of an inch. So I don't have to calculate it or figure it out, I could just click on the dimension and say divided by 2. And then if I decide that I want this to be smaller, my dimension in the middle changes as well. Okay, so I'm going to go through and, and move these around a little bit, change some of the sizes to them to what I think I might like, and I can always add change this later. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a 60 degree angle to it. I'm going to make six patterns uh, there are six instances around my pattern, and 360 degrees divided by six is 60. Uh, I'm going to add one more little feature here. I'm going to add another one that's going to come out, and I'm going to try to get that parallel, and I'm going to bring it straight down instead, and then I'm going to bring a little shape inside. It's going to give me something a little different. All right, and then I have to just make sure that it's closed. You just kind of take a look around, and again, I can trim this or not, it doesn't matter. I'm going to finish my sketch and extrude this feature, just selecting both parts. The distance doesn't matter, but I'm going to give it a distance of 0.1 just so it doesn't look so, uh, so funny. And I'm going to click OK. All right, so now I have one kind of, just a little section of it. I need to mirror this part. I'm going to click on the Mirror button, and I'm going to choose my feature from my browser. And for my mirror plane, I'm going to choose that middle. Right. And so now we have part of my snowflake. I'm going to do view visual style shaded with edges just to help me see it a little bit better as I spin it around. Right. And so now I'm going to pattern this. I go back to my 3D model tab. I'm going to click on my circular pattern. I'm going to choose both of the features that I've created. And that red arrow goes to white. I'm going to choose the, the next one for my rotation axis. And because we did the front plane, my z-axis is right in the middle. And you'll see it. I'm going to spin it around six times. Now you see a lot of overlapping and things like that. And, and that's okay. It'll still work. And if I don't want that, I can change it. So I'm going to click OK and see what happens. And so I get that shape. And that's kind of cool. But if I don't like it, I can go back to my sketch. And these things were kind of overlapping with each other, so I'm going to make everything just a little bit smaller. And I'm going to bring this in a little bit. And finish my sketch, and everything's going to update because I've patterned it. 
And so I can just keep modifying that. If I want to add a little, um, maybe a little something in the middle, I'm going to add just a little polygon here, finish my sketch, and cut that out all. And there's my snowflake. And if you want to add anything else to it, you can go through and add it. If you want to round over the features, I would do it not in here. I would go back to my uh, original extrusion and add some fillets. You're just going to have to update your pattern and, and things like that. You can kind of, because of the way we've done everything, it's very easy to go back through and, and modify everything. So I could round these over if I wanted to. Or I'm using 0.05 because I made these 0.1, and that's going to give me a rounded feature. I'm going to leave that nice and square. When I hit Apply, and I bring my mirror back, it should update my mirror. So I just have to edit my feature and add that fillet, and that'll add those. And then my circular pattern didn't add all those, so I got to do the same thing. Edit my feature. And just choose that fillet that I added. And now that'll add that, and I have a little bit of a different look. And then when I move my end of part down, my thing comes back in the middle. So there is circular pattern with a snowflake.